many of y'all even knew that this was a service that you could get? Adding massage therapy to your self-care practice, your self-care day, could really help you through a lot of different issues. So remember that big pouch that we had? Look how smaller it's getting. This is the most important part, you gotta think. This is where everything happened at. Right. So if everything is stuck and jumbled up in here, right. it can't receive information, it can't right. do anything. So we wanna release all of this. We want everything to work on one accord. Mm -hmm. See you ladies, it ain't the dimples. <laughs> you just need a massage. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> loved ones long time no see today i am doing a self-care reset for my fibroid journey I have not talked about this in a while it was a lot going on in this side of the world okay i was planning my wedding i was in and out of the hospital and it was very stressful it's a very stressful time and i will be honest and say that that part of my journey kind of took a back seat still like eating the right way and doing things, but there were things that I needed to be doing that I wasn't doing, like taking my vitamins, making sure that I was staying on top of my routine. Um, planning a wedding is pretty stressful and stress is a very big piece of fibroid growth. So when you are more stressed out, your fibroids are more inflamed and they grow. So yeah. If you are new here, hi, my name is Sonya Star J. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and make sure that you do that. We are getting back on our sh okay? We are restarting, restarting this fabric healing journey. I didn't fall off too bad, um, but I did fall off. I was doing really good during the summer. I was looking snatched in June, July, but then I went to the hospital in July, had my bachelorette party at the end of July, and then August was just crazy for me health-wise. And then September, the stress of the wedding. So it's October <laughs> and we're getting back to it. So I'm going to be showing y'all everything that I'm going to be doing to get myself back in a routine. I also have been showing like my daily updates on my TikTok channel. So if you're not my friend on TikTok, make sure that we connect on there, okay? Uh, today, I am scheduled to get a fertility massage. All right, y'all, so the beginning of October, I actually went and got certified to become a pregnancy, labor, and postpartum massage therapist. I'm also going to be getting certified as a fertility massage therapist. It's crazy how your life journey will open up different opportunities for you. Like with me going through this experience and just seeing how many other women are struggling to get pregnant due to, you know, fibroids and other reproductive health things, it's made me want to do more to give back. And I've said that I don't necessarily want to be a coach, but I do want to help women in some way with giving away the information that I'm learning to heal my own body and just like how we can just be more supportive to each other. So that is what I'm doing. I'm becoming a pregnancy, labor, fertility massage therapist based in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I love that for me and I love that for the women that I'll be able to serve in service. But today I'm going to go get a massage from a young lady that I mentioned in one of my previous videos, Kanik, who is the owner of Need That Massage. And y'all are gonna be able to come and experience that with me and learn about the benefits of abdominal massage and fertility massage and how it can help you on your uh, fertility journey. So that'll be pretty cool. I have been wasting time all morning, not really being too productive. I worked my ass off this week at the spa. So I kind of felt like, girl, you can rest, you know, BS around, but still got things that I need to do. I straightened my hair for the first time and forever because it's fall and that's what you do in the fall. You blow your hair out and you get a silk press. It's not a silk press, but it's straight, okay? So we're about to get us a smoothie. I'm gonna get my car cleaned out because it looks nasty. Okay, my car look, it looks lived in, all right? So we're going to go and get ourselves together, reset our self-care to get rid of these monsters that we have here. I will say though that cycle was bad this last period, but the one before that, it was all right. You know, I think, with the things that I was eating and the stress made it worse. 
So before we go ahead and get the day started, I do just want to let y'all know what things I'm going to be avoiding and what you should be avoiding too if you are trying to heal your body from fibroids. I'm calling this sass, okay? I wanna try to find like a Y so I can call it sassy, okay? But I don't want nobody to steal it. But anyway, it's called sass, okay? So we've got sugar. You want to avoid sugar, white sugar, sugar, except sugars from like fruits and things like that. You wanna avoid artificial sugars because sugar causes inflammation, it makes you bloated, it can cause acne, and so sugar makes fibroids grow and it can cause a whole bunch of different other health issues, but you wanna avoid sugar, okay? And then alcohol, S. Okay, so alcohol, you want to limit your use of alcohol. Alcohol is also an inflammatory and it's not good for your liver. And so I want, let me backtrack real quick. The liver is really big. It's a really big part of all of this. You need to clean your liver in order to help your body to heal itself. I still have to get good on the verbiage of like how it all comes together. But from the beginning, when I started this process, the first person and every person that I've talked to since has told me that your liver plays a very big part in your fibroid healing and you need to uh, detox the body. Oh, because estrogen is metabolized through the liver. And so that's also where sugar goes through, alcohol, liver so that is why we want to make sure that our liver is clear and that our colon is clear and yeah i got maybe i can use the why for our colon somehow because colon health is a really big piece of this anyway so we got sugar alcohol soy all right now a lot of people when they go on this journey they become vegan i have done the vegan thing i'm more so plant-based now i don't necessarily want to be boxed in to vegan because i don't like like the plant plant-based meats. I don't like that stuff. So I'm just leaning more towards plant-based. So uh, soy. Soy is so bad for us. And I had some vegans and some women tell me, oh no, you're okay. You can eat soy. No, we should not be eating soy. If we have reproductive health issues or especially if you have fibroids, you should not be consuming soy. Soy is highly inflammatory. I actually went to a restaurant, a vegan restaurant, and the lady, the owner of the restaurant, I asked her, I was like, is this food soy based? She was like, oh no, because I can't eat soy because of my fibroids. I was like, since me too, you know? So soy really messes with your chemical imbalance. It messes with your hormones. Anytime I eat soy, as soon as I eat it, I immediately get emotional and kind of like suicidal. It's really crazy how I know when I've consumed soy, I'll break out, uh, my mood starts changing. Like it's really crazy how the things that we consume really play a big part in like our overall health and wellness. So soy and then stress i was telling y'all stress plays a big part in fabric growth when you are stressed out it raises your cortisol levels and in turn raises your estrogen levels and estrogen increases fabric growth so the goal in all of this is to decrease estrogen dominance and decrease uh, how much estrogen you have in your body so some ways that we can do that are by taking our vitamins and supplements to increase our hormone balance, making sure that we are doing things that can excrete the estrogen in our body, such as working out, um, getting moving, which I have not been doing too good at, but I want to start getting back into the groove of things. Like, I don't know, like, I don't know if it's like the fibroids that cause my mood to kind of, I've been depressed a little bit, just a little bit. I've been stressed out, I've been depressed. So um, that has made me kind of just sit around and not really be too active. Um, and then another thing is making sure that you're using the bathroom. So if you're not pooping, regularly then all that excess stuff like the poop and estrogen is sitting in your colon and those toxins that are in your colon are then coming into other organs of your body and your reproductive system is right there on your colon and so you see how that can make that worse yeah so we want to make sure that we are totally cleansing out our bodies by eating things that are antioxidants and anti-inflammatories and making sure that we're staying 
hydrated. Okay, so I think that is all uh, for right now. We are going to go through this whole process. I'm gonna show y'all what I'm about to take as far as my vitamin. And then we're gonna go and get this massage. I'm excited. I've never gotten a massage from this girl before. So yeah, it's gonna be an experience. <laughs> now, so some people are against taking vitamins and supplements. But to be honest, I'm not the best at eating in general. So trying to eat to get all of my, you know, nutrients, vitamins, and minerals and stuff, it doesn't work that well for me. But what has been working is making sure that I'm taking these vitamins and supplements, okay? So I fell off. I did fall off. But we back on. And these are the things that we're taking, okay? So we are taking the vitamin D3 with K2. We are taking our vitamin B complex and we are taking Vitex. the owner of need that massage okay I'm about to get my massage done and the reason why I wanted to show this to y'all today is because a lot of people don't realize that you can actually get a massage that can help you with your fertility and like help you with your reproductive health and there's a form of massage called lymphatic drainage right that helps to do what again improve circulation basically moving out old things so we our females sometimes we get a lot of stuff stuck into our organs our reproductive organs so just trying to move out the all the old blood and stagnant blood and stagnant things in our body move that out to get healing and more circulation in through that area yeah and that's exactly what i was telling y'all earlier so this is another one of those things that you could do to help if you're even if you're not trying to have a child this can still help if you're dealing with um fibroids or pcos or anything in your reproductive health system so i'm gonna show y'all little tidbits of what we're doing today y'all not gonna get the whole thing okay because i'm trying to relax but <laughs> and i've had endometriosis and i have a two-year-old now because i received a fertility massage so i'm here to deliver the same service to cyan yeah and this that's the reason why i actually came here to y'all because she is also somebody who has experienced some of the same things that many of us are dealing with so i just want to let y'all know and show y'all that it's possible for us to be on the other side of this all right so let's get into it That's your specialty, so I know, but so like the thing about it is, you know, it's like in massage, people can have like negative reactions to it if they really don't want it. So that's why I'm just like, are we sure? Uh, you can have, <laughs> know you can have negative reactions to it. Uh, a lot of the areas that I'm gonna be in are gonna be, like I said, down in here in the school area, pelvis area, and then on the front, I'm gonna do just a little bit of so as okay. what are the benefits of cupping? Cupping helps me um, remove that stagnant blood. Okay. And knowing that the only reason why the muscle tenses up is because the fascia is tight. So if I can release the fascia, ultimately that lets the muscle go. And then allows everything to kind of relax more. What 
What's NOT? Uh, neuromuscular. Uh, it's pretty much lymphatic. Uh, okay. I'm getting in dicey territory here, so this might be a little uncomfortable. Trying to get these trigger points from around your tailbone. Like up, mm -hmm. and you can. So like people be calling it like. What, what does it say you like? Yeah. But I feel like that's really just jumbled up fashion tissue. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's what I See, ladies, it ain't the dimples. <laughs> <laughs> you just need a massage. <laughs> Pretty much. Does he smooth out that fashion tissue? All that kind of goes away. I don't know if it showed, but right in here was a lot of built up fashion. Right into the top of the glute area, top of um, the low back area, and now we smooth all that out, getting a lot of circulation through this pelvis area. And now we're gonna flip over to the front. This is the funnest part. So I was telling y'all before that I didn't used to like getting massages. I didn't like people touching me, okay? I almost failed school because I didn't know how to relax. And I think that adding massage therapy to your self-care practice, your self-care day, could really help you through a lot of different issues. Not just the issues that we're talking about today, but it could help you with like your anxiety, depression. It could help you with just like uh, healing through emotional traumas like touch. Touch therapy is actually a thing too. Is that it too? <laughs> Not sensual. <laughs> You said no. Not sensual. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> like the Instagram massage therapist, ladies. <laughs> Y'all know. Okay. Not those ones. But let's see what we got going on here. You see my belly? This is the part we get into all the good stuff. This is where I move bad stuff out, allowing good stuff to come in. This is the part where most therapists really need to be intentional about what they're doing because, let's face it, we're trying to bring new life into the world. So we always want to be intentional about the things that we are doing to a body every time we touch it. Anytime you stroke, the stomach, you always go clockwise the way that our bowels move. This is also something that you can do to yourself at home to a certain extent, but it is good to get a professional to do this for you. And you said that getting uh, these type of massages helped you in your fertility journey too, right? I feel like I got pregnant, maybe. I feel like it wasn't long, like two months. Mm -hmm. I had mine. No, I ain't trying to get pregnant tomorrow or nothing. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, we are. First comes love, then comes marriage. Then comes the baby and the baby carriage, okay? <laughs> See, you feel how hard my stomach is? Yes, but we are gonna move that So I was telling y'all, earlier that a big part of degenerating fibroid growth and healing fibroids is to move all of that stuff throughout the, through the body so detoxifying the body through the liver the kidneys and the colon this helps with that okay so you do your cleanses and all of those things but also doing a wound massage and uh, using castor oil packs and stuff that helps to detoxify the reproductive system too. It's a very sensitive area too for therapy, so if you're not gentle on the hand, you might not want to do this. So we got some stagnation in the abdomen area here. We're gonna try to move that out. She's just gonna have to use the bathroom pretty much all day. That's all that's gonna happen. That is exactly what I was about to start talking about. <laughs> Shot for a minute there. I also will say that it feels much better when you have somebody else do it too. What I was about to tell y'all was a lot of womb wellness coaches will tell you that a big part of your reproductive health is clearing out your colon. And so with that comes your diet and your nutrition. A lot of the things that we eat tends to stick to the colon and makes it harder for things to pass through. And that's why that excess estrogen stays in the colon and you need to move that through by doing wound massages, um, eating things that are anti-inflammatory, staying hydrated, drinking lots of water so that all of those things can pass through the correct way and also clearing out your liver and your kidneys like I was telling y'all this morning. So one of the things that we were talking about were the different types of massage therapy that you can ask for when you're searching for a massage therapist. A lot of times we go into a spa and we just get a regular relaxation massage. That ain't what we're doing here today. So when you are seeking out massage therapy or any type of treatment like that, try to support a small business or a local business that 
specializes in what it is that you're looking for. She does a range of different things. So today she worked on my glutes and got a lot of the things out of my body that regular spas want, they don't do, they just wouldn't do. And right now what she's about to do is do lymphatic cupping, right? Yeah, so we're doing some wood therapy, which pretty much breaks down the tissue. So I will be breaking down the tissue and then we're gonna use a lymphatic cup, which doesn't have a uh, great suction like my other regular cups do. It has a lighter suction to it, so it's not gonna be as intense. Um, when I go on her stomach. That's also going to break down fascia tissue and move out stagnant blood, allowing better blood to circulate better through this area because that's what we want. Once again, lightly, very light, very, very, very light, even lighter than what you're going with your hand because you cannot feel what you're doing with the tool. So you gotta go extremely light. How many of y'all even knew that this was a service that you could get? I know I didn't. I didn't know anything about abdominal muscle well I knew a little bit about it from school but I didn't know that this was like a whole field like a whole range of services that you could get to help you with this so yeah this is pretty cool the BBL girlies know oh yeah and they do <laughs> they do <laughs> Remember that big pouch that we had? Look how smaller it's getting. Look how smaller it's getting. I'm gonna zoom in for y'all later. Also go to a therapist that loves what they do. Yeah. That's where you're gonna get your best results. So we're going with the lymphatic cup. Everything that I do is always going to be in the clockwise motion. Not anything what you thought was gonna no. be. <laughs> and so if I'm correct, the cupping draws out inflammation, right? Yep. And it helps to circulate the blood. Yep. So you do this cupping the same way you would do a massage. You always go in the way striations of the muscle. Wow. Y'all, it already feels different. The stomach looks different. And because I move everything through the bladder, I'm moving it to the nearest lymph site. So it's going to be down in the groin where your lymph nodes are. That's the most important thing. Anything you ever do, you want to always move to the nearest lymph site. So if you're on the face, you want to move to the neck. Anywhere in the chest, you want to move to the arms, legs, you want to move to the, the hips, and well, your thighs, you want to move to the hips, your legs, you want to move to your feet. Part of this pelvic floor is getting in that groin area Ooh. and getting those um, <laughs> trigger points that literally, so like like you said, like I'm pretty much the only person who like touches glutes and uh -huh. stuff. Yeah, I'm probably going to be the only therapist who does this as well. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why. Okay. So most therapists don't know how to do this because they don't know what they're doing or uh, where they're gonna go. Mm -hmm. So as long as you know what you're doing. Oh, what does this do? So basically, this is again. This is the most important part. You gotta think. This is where everything happened at. Right. So if everything is stuck and jumbled up in here, then. Right. It can't receive information. It can't right. do anything. So we want to release all of this. We want everything to work on one accord. Mm -hmm. And this is very important, ladies, because a lot of trauma gets stuck in our bodies and our womb areas in different areas. So if you've ever experienced any um, trauma related to your, you know, your reproductive organs, any sexual health trauma. Um, it's good to do things like this to release that emotion. I'm not in her stuff, y'all, either. No. I'm in her growing. So. She's not. <laughs> listen, <laughs> this will not even make the. the yeah. yeah. That, that's out of my scope of practice. Okay. No, she's just like in my, my growing area. And so this is another piece of the detox that I went through. So that was the spiritual and emotional health cleansing. And this is just another piece of that. So there are just different ways for us to get better at taking care of ourselves. Oh, Lord. So the stingy feeling is always gonna be fashion. I know. And it needs to be broken up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hit one try to relax again. There we go. There we go.
Here we go. Yes, ma'am. Drop that hip on the ground, girl. Drop that hip. That thing's set. Okay, let's see if I can get it. So the other key part is the chiropractor. You know that, right? No, true. So I like to tell people to go to the chiropractor because so when our bones are out of alignment, the the transmission, the nerves and stuff don't always give the messages right away. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why like sometimes it's a slower process and our body is healing itself. Mm -hmm. So aligning your spine back and your pelvis aligning together everything aligns back right it allows signals to be transmitted the way they're supposed to and things like that so i always try to tell people to go to a chiropractor if they're going to see a massage therapist they're going to move the bones back then i'm going to move the muscle back everything feels good everything's real smooth we have a lot of fashion so y'all, the key is going to a massage therapist who likes to massage therapy <laughs> and enjoys what they do. Now the really good thing would be lining. If you discharge lining, that right there, mm -hmm. that's key. Yeah. Once I start discharging lining, I don't know for whatever reason, like two weeks later, that's when I was pregnant. It was like shut up. It was the craziest thing. Let me keep this man away from me. <laughs> so that was just like, but I had did the detox tea that I had sent you. Uh -huh. I had did, I was doing that. I uh, had yeah. the massage. Like I was intentionally doing things too. Yeah. So, but it was just like, once I started seeing that line and that was that repairing, yeah. like my body was repairing itself. So this is my week too. Moving so. out. So yeah. We will see. Y'all need that for sure. All right, y'all. So it is eight o'clock, and I was supposed to come home and start cooking dinner, but I didn't because we had marriage counseling, and it took a little bit longer than expected. So I didn't have time to go to the store because I wanted to make y'all this uh, air fried cauliflower, but we're not gonna be able to do that today. So I'm looking around the kitchen. I'm like, oh my goodness, what can I make? So we are about to make stuffed sweet potatoes. I've never done this before, so. <laughs> We just about to put some stuff together and see how it turns out, all right? Let's do it. I got these small sweet potatoes. Then I got this big one, all right? So, <laughs> this is the one that I'm going to use. I'm going to put oil on these, grapeseed oil, and then I'm gonna stick these in the oven at 400. And I'm also going to roast some chickpeas and taco seasoning. All right, so I put, I wrapped it, I covered it with grapeseed oil and wrap it in aluminum for you. Okay, so while you're on a fabric healing journey, people will tell you that you should limit the amount of carbs that you eat because carbs break down into glucose, which is sugar. And sugar is something that you want to kind of avoid for the most part while you're healing uh, your body from fibroids. So the most important thing to remember is to stay away from white pastas, sugars, potatoes, carbs, all of those things. So tonight we're gonna to be using a sweet potato because I don't have any lettuce cups that I would usually use for like my tacos and things. So I'm about to show y'all how I'm going to assemble this stuffed sweet potato. It's about to be fire. And I'm gonna cut this open. Man, it just smells so good, it looks so good. Then I got me some roasted chickpeas. Chickpeas were roasted in um, taco seasoning. So that's gonna be like my meat substitute for this meal today. Go ahead and I'm gonna add me some pico on here. And I added some guacamole. I guess you could get a little fancy and put um, like some lettuce on here i'm gonna add some uh salsa all right now we're about to see what this is hitting for let's try this sweet potato with roasted chickpeas guacamole pico and salsa all right it's different i probably would have seasoned the sweet potato i don't know with what though let's see well wait because the chickpeas, ha ha! The chickpeas did it! Mmm. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, there. Depending on who you ask, they might say that you shouldn't eat sweet potatoes, you shouldn't eat tomatoes, you shouldn't eat um, chickpeas. Uh, but like I said, it's based off of who you talk to, what works best for your body, right? And just developing a meal plan that's suitable for your healing journey. I know for me, I could eat all these things and enjoy them. Now that I'm winding down my night, I'm gonna go ahead and do my dandelion fruit tea with some agave. And then I'm gonna get ready to do my castor oil pack. Now one thing y'all didn't see me do today was eat a whole lot of leafy greens. Now, I told y'all in the beginning, I'm not the best at eating. I have a salad in there, but the day just kinda got away from me. Um, and I did not eat the salad with my sweet potato. While I should have, that actually should have been like the first thing that I ate. You should be prioritizing leafy greens and fruits into your diet. So papayas, melons, berries, things like that. Things that have high water content, watermelon, honeydew, cantaloupe. Um, things of that nature that have higher water content because you want to stay hydrated and the sugars and fruits are not bad for you. They're really good for you and we want to get more whole foods in our diet. Today, I sucked at it. I will be honest, doing a whole bunch of running around. The thing that I should have done was meal prepped and planned for today, but I just didn't do a good job of it. I will say that I did do a better job at drinking more water, which is something that I'm also not really the best at, but it's a journey, right? And that's why we are doing this together. Yeah, I didn't really eat a lot today and I'm too tired to try and eat now. Ideally, would have wanted to eat it for lunch, but I wasn't here. And by the time I came home, it was time for dinner. So that is something to keep in mind to make sure that you are, you know, eating enough. Another thing too, is that what I usually do is I juice. I don't even know why I didn't think about that. Because I'm not the best at eating my fruits and vegetables, I juice. I juice a lot, honey. I got two juicers back here. I got a centrifugal juicer and a masticating juicer. And that is the best way for me to get my fruits and vegetables in on a daily basis because I don't really like chewing that much. I know that sounds weird, but I will drink the heck out of some juice. I just haven't prepped my juices for this week. So I'll probably do some tomorrow. But yeah, duh. If you are not the best at eating juice, smoothies you know do those throughout the day definitely going to make sure that i do one of those tomorrow yeah my day just got away from me i should have done that this morning i won't think about it but let's drink this tea i was committed to making sure i got some fruit <laughs> so i got me a pear and pears are really good for your reproductive health <laughs> what i'm about to do is my castor oil wrap i've showed y'all this before i will link the video up here so all i do is i take my organic castor oil and i apply it to my stomach and then i wrap my stomach with my castor oil wrap okay and then once i wrap my stomach i then apply heat you can use a hot water bottle or you can use a body heater okay so that concludes our self-care day for the day i hope you all have gotten some good information from this video okay if you've made it this far please don't forget to subscribe to the channel before you head out all right to follow along this journey i'm going to be going back to the doctor soon to get an official update of where we are all right but now that we're back on this journey and we're back doing the thing it's, it's time to get serious I just hope that you all recognize that it's possible for us to heal our bodies when we are committed to the process. And also to let y'all know that, you know, the, the process is a journey, you know, and um, it's not an easy journey either. It's easy to fall off and get distracted from life and stress and everything but you know what there is a community of women out here who are you know wanting the same thing natural healing 
alternative healing methods through nutrition and lifestyle. My doctor told me that it's possible. Other women have, you know, done it. So I know that it's possible. God is a healer. Okay. And that's one thing I do know. So we're just going to get it together. Another thing is making sure to get good sleep. And that's something that I'm not the best at. I will be up until one, two o'clock in the morning and that's not healthy uh, because when you don't get enough sleep, that also raises your cortisol levels, which in turn raises your estrogen levels or it um, turns into estrogen that needs detox out of the body. So it is getting pretty late. So I'm about to go ahead and apply my wrap wash my face and i'm about to go to sleep <laughs> i love y'all catch y'all in the next video